What would you do if one morning you woke up to find a real dragon coiled by your bed, its scales and teeth glittering in the moonlight? Would you scream in terror or embrace the opportunity to learn? In this feature, we explore why dragons remain important in most traditions of Buddhism and why they are associated with Shakyamuni Buddha, Amitabha, Avalokiteshvara, Guanyin, and Tara. Come along with us now into the very real world of Buddhist dragons. In Zen or Chan Buddhism, the tale of the true dragon is used by teachers to illustrate the importance of true practice over entirely intellectual study. In the Buddhist Zen story of the true dragon, a real dragon decides to visit one of his Buddhist admirers. There was a monk who loved dragons. He studied dragon law and decorated his room with paintings and statues of dragons. He would talk on and on about dragons to anyone who would listen. One day, a dragon heard about him and thought, how lovely that this man appreciates us. It would surely make him happy to meet a true dragon. The kindly dragon flew to the monk's room and went inside to find him asleep. The monk woke up and saw the dragon coiled by his bed its scales and teeth glittering in the moonlight. Before the dragon could introduce himself, the monk screamed in terror, terrified of that which he thought he loved and understood. The dragon flew away, never to return. This story is meant to illustrate how it is important to have a teacher take refuge and more importantly to practice, not simply to hang up pictures and study sutra. In the story the monk told everyone he loved dragons, put up pictures, and said he was an expert. Then, when the true dragon appeared, he didn't understand. He panicked and scared off the friendly dragon. In other words, Buddhism is meant to be practiced rather than reduced to form, theory, and intellectual comprehension. It is more important to meet the Dharma through practice than to philosophize and tell stories. So, if a dragon ever appears in your bedroom, remember to say, hi, don't scream and run away. Why was a Buddhist monk obsessed with dragons? In Buddhism, Dragons are important symbols and appear everywhere. They are associated with Guanin or Avalokiteshvara and the entire lotus family. Dragons are forces of nature in Buddhism. They actually appear in Mahayana Sutra, for example when Shakyamuni Buddha taught the Dragon King. Guanin is often depicted riding a dragon. There are many charming stories of Guan Yin, Avalokiteshvara and dragons, most with lessons in compassion, most notable the story of Long Nu and Sudhana. Especially the story of Long Nu and Shan Cai Tongzi who appear in the Lotus Sutra in Chapter 12. Many years after Shan Cai became a disciple of Guan Yin, a distressing event happened in the South Sea. The son of the Dragon King was caught by a fisherman while taking the form of a fish. Being stuck on land, he was unable to transform back into his dragon form. His father, despite being a mighty Dragon King, was unable to do anything while his son was on land. Distressed, the son called out to all of heaven and earth. Hearing this cry, Guanin quickly sent Shan Cai to recover the fish. Shan Cai begged the fish seller to spare the life of the fish. The crowd, now angry at someone so daring, was about to chase him away from the fish when Guan Yin projected her voice from far away, saying, A life should definitely belong to one who tries to save it, not one who tries to take it. 
the crowd realizing their shameful actions and desire, dispersed. Shan Cai brought the fish back to Guan Yin, who promptly returned it to the sea. There the fish transformed back to a dragon and returned home. As a reward for Guan Yin's help saving his son, the dragon king sent his daughter, a girl called Long Nu, dragon girl, to present to Guan Yin the Pearl of Light. The Pearl of Light was a precious jewel owned by the dragon king that constantly shone. Long Nu, overwhelmed by the presence of Guan Yin, asked to be her disciple so that she might study the Buddha Dharma. Why is dragon law a major part of Buddhism? Unlike its demonic European counterpart, the Buddhist dragon is a creature of great creative power. It is a force of nature, representing the strong male yang principle of heaven. Change, energy, wealth, and creativity. Dragons are shapeshifters, able to transform at will, from as small as the silkworm to a giant that fills the entire sky. In Buddhism, where it is written in the Heart Sutra, form is emptiness, it is not surprising to find that dragons are of no fixed form. This is why you can see them, as we did in the story of Guan Yin, sometimes with horns, fish bodies, serpentine bodies, lion heads, or other attributes. They can shapeshift, even appearing as beautiful people, as other animals, or even shrinking so small they are invisible. Dragons require no wings to fly. The great and beautiful creatures fly in the air and swim in the sea, and move between worlds and dimensions with equal ease. Dragons are hardwired into the collective consciousness of all world cultures. According to Joseph Campbell, a mythologist who expanded on the theories of psychologist Carl Jung, explaining the dragon symbol is just one of the basic images people recognize without being taught. In Tibetan Buddhism and in Bhutan, dragons, together with the four dignities or animals are associated with the Buddhas of the four directions. In Bhutan the four dignities are called the four auspicious ones, who are Garuda, dragon, tiger, and snow lion. So, if you find yourself drawn to images of the dragon, of the Garuda, snow lion or tiger. Remember the teacher Dogen, referring to the story of the monk obsessed with dragons. I beseech you, noble friends, in learning through experience, do not become so accustomed to images that you are dismayed by the true dragon. If you enjoyed this presentation, please subscribe. Please consider supporting our mission Spread the Dharma on Patreon at patreon.com slash Buddha Weekly. Thank you. Buddha Weekly, helping to spread the Dharma. Thank you.